Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a very broad spectrum of fantasy news to get through. We got injuries, we got upcoming releases. I'm ignoring a lot of Disney stuff. I'm sorry, look, come here, a little closer. That's right, just there. I like Disney content too, but every other YouTuber who covers this kind of stuff has already made a bunch of videos about all the upcoming Disney releases, and it would be like 80% of the fantasy news if I went over it all. I'd prefer this show to be like the smaller stories, the little things that are hardcore fantasy that may have flown under your radar. That's the heart and soul of fantasy news that this goblin wants to bring to your table. So hey, that's what we're focusing on. If you want to see all the stuff that was renounced over like the recent Disney wave, head over to Mr. Sunday Movies. He does fantastic content where he's going through it. And I recommend you give him a looky-loo. But for me, let's stick to that hardcore fantasy genre. Though because it is hardcore fantasy news, I will mention the fact that Children of Blood and Bone is going to be adapted by Lucas freaking Films. Oh my God, that's huge. So, all right, that I'll include from Disney, but just that for now. Tor released a list of their upcoming most anticipated releases for 2021. This had a lot of titles I was already aware were coming on down that bumpy, rocky storytelling road, and a few I wasn't aware of. And it's shaping up to be an interesting year for fantasy. I thought 2020 was probably like the best year for fantasy in my lifetime, but good Lord, 2021 could give it a run for its money. If all these like long delayed, when are they gonna come out? Come on, please, 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 fantasy books finally do come out. And moving on to the next story, we have a smooth transition right into the fact that we have some encouraging words from Patrick Rothfuss himself on his Twitch stream about Doors of Stone. My collar's popped. I'm not gonna retake it. This has been a great intro so far. He also hit on his own battle with depression and anxiety and how he's doing better now. And as someone who fights a similar fight, I just wanted to say I love seeing an author utilize his platform to talk about stuff like this in any capacity. Just, you know, mental health is not something that should be kept under a blanket and having someone with a platform speak on it is something I respect immensely. So not only is he joining the latest trend of fantasy authors using their platform and their fan base for engagement, but he's doing it well and promoting awareness for good issues. Right on, I appreciate that. Pat seems like a cool guy. Moving on, next news. It is very unfortunate to hear that Henry Cavill suffered an injury while filming The Witcher. Ugh, that sucks. The filming for season two has officially been put on hold while he is recovering. It is a leg injury. We do not know exactly what happened yet. He just suddenly pulled up and was clearly in a lot of pain. It wasn't clear if an object had hit his leg or was some sort of hamstring or muscle injury. Update, it's officially been released that it is a minor leg muscle injury. Now, when things like this do happen on set, they probably do have to delay a bulk of their filming, but this does not mean the show itself could even be delayed. They might be able to shift some of the other stuff that will be filmed around Henry Cavill up to be taken care of. This usually doesn't entirely halt a production, despite what some articles do say, where it's like, all oh, production halted. They have other things they need to get done. Landscape shots, scenes without Geralt, things like that. Hopefully they're able to work around them quite a bit, but season two should still be coming roughly on time. One actor, even the star being injured, does not make it all come to a grinding halt. Production is a huge process with stuff happening even behind the camera, away from filming, and this is a part of that. So I insist on looking on the bright side of things. I insist on it. Speaking of looking on the bright side, I don't believe this next headline. We had a tease for Elder Scrolls 6 maybe being released on the PlayStation 5, with the PlayStation official blog talking about how they do anticipate having it on their platform. Now, the deal where Elder Scrolls was bought just happened. Like, in the grand scheme of things, this was like yesterday. Not really, but you know what I mean. So, it could be made to be an exclusive if they're able to get out some kind of contracts. Though, if the studio behind Elder Scrolls Bethesda did have some kind of contract with PlayStation, they might have to release it for them as well. But I can guarantee you, there are people at Microsoft who want it to be an Xbox exclusive. And so I'm not putting all my eggs in the basket of it will be on PlayStation until I see like a box with it confirmed, yes, we are getting Elder Scrolls 6 on the PlayStation. That's just where I'm at mentally. I don't, it's a very harsh left turn from the last story. <laughs> now, Matt Smith had a fun interview where he was talking about how he's really looking forward to being in the upcoming Game of Thrones prequel show, which I'm getting slowly more excited for, especially the more I'm finally able to process that the original showrunners are not involved. Matt Smith's a talented actor. I originally just only had the impression of him from The Doctor, which is kind of like a campy type performance. I'm not 
bashing that performance, it's just what it is. But I've seen him in more serious stuff, and now I'm very much so anticipating seeing what he can bring to a Game of Thrones type setting. Because Matt Smith is a well-trained actor who has quite the diverse resume in his back catalog. So yes, his casting was officially announced for the show, and if you want to check out his interview where he's talking about his anticipation of being a part of it, link, of course, right down there in the description, just as every story I talk about here today is. Now in a story that is not directly fantasy related, but could have quite the impact on your enjoyment for almost every single audiobook you take in in the future with your little through your ears. Google is apparently trying to develop an AI that can turn any ebook into an audiobook. If it delivers on every promise Google is making, this could be an oh my god awful impact to the narrator community as people are trying to actually continue to make a living narrating audiobooks. If suddenly AI can just generate a good sounding narration that is human and believable. Uh, that would not be awesome. I actually am very against this. I love the performances that individual artists bring to books. I love seeing how a voice actor can interpret a fantasy world and really pump in their own like life to it. An AI, as someone who has, you know, a background in software, it'll be formulaic. That's all I'm gonna say, even if they manage to make it not sound like Siri and be horrible. Like the Kindle currently does if you make it auto read. It won't have the same vibrancy a real voice actor coming in will. And I don't know, I like a human take. I don't want a software's take. If this is pulled off, it could be a meteor to the smaller indie voice actor uh, career path. I'll be keeping an eye on this one because wow, that's a big deal. But as for right now, the tool is just in beta. So let's go ahead and get a bunch of trailer news right out of the way. We had a first look at Crimson Desert, which to me looked like the Game of Thrones game we never got. It, wow, that pretty cool looking, pretty, pretty cool. As well as Outside the Wire, where Anthony Mackie is a super augmented soldier going around kicking butt. Interested to see where Anthony Mackie's career goes. I like him in certain roles, I've seen him, and now he's definitely pushing in a more action star direction with, you know, obvious examples and this one and a couple others I see coming up on his IMDb or already done. Yeah, I want to see how Anthony Mackie lands because he's yet to have like the that's the Anthony Mackie show everyone was like crazy big fan of and I think he could do it. He's got a good charisma to him and a nice physicality for an action star. So yeah, I want to see this because it's a sci-fi movie, obviously, but more for Anthony Mackie, strangely. He's one of the actors that my brain just picked out and was like, I want to see where you go. We also got a trailer for an Apple TV Plus short film called Wolf Walker. So it seemed kind of cute. Uh, I can't really speak on it much beyond that, but if you want to see this very interesting and beautifully animated short film that apparently be on Apple TV Plus, watch the trailer. And if it convinces you to watch Apple TV Plus, good, good job, Apple make that more money. BioWare dropped two mega pieces of news on us. The first of which was that a new Dragon Age game is coming, and the second of which is a new Mass Effect. Now, this is different from the remastering of Mass Effect they've already announced working on. Here we saw new footage of what we assume is Liara going through and picking up an N7 piece of armor. Uh, great. We also had someone involved in the game confirm that when they're walking up that hill, it's a dead reaper. And then also like two galaxies being in the trailer they confirmed was intentional. Okay, so I wanna go on a bit of a tangent. Just follow along with me here. I know we've had two weak Mass Effect injuries in the last games that have come out. Andromeda was pretty much universally panned and Mass Effect 3 had a disappointing ending that made fans very reasonably and measured upset. But I think everyone is still very aware of the potential of the world built so far. Everyone knows Mass Effect could still be great and overcome a couple bumps in the road. I mean, you gotta remember, this was a video game franchise that was so successful. There was quite a bit of movement on the idea of a movie before that fizzled out. Bioware has done a lot to anger people. And with apparently quite a bit of changing at the guard over there, I don't think we entirely know what to expect as video game fans. Shallowly enough for me though, I have enough nostalgia for the first two Mass Effect fans that I'm still on board for whatever next entry we're going to get. I maybe shouldn't at this point, but I just do because I remember what it felt like the first two, three, four, five, ten times I played the first Mass Effect games, and they were extraordinary. So I'm hoping BioWare utilizes the full potential of this universe once again and delivers the Mass Effect we as fans know can be there. It can. It's still absolutely 100% has that. The soul is still alive. And in the 
final piece of fantasy news we're going to be covering here today. Cyberpunk's reception has been kind of everything. People have been saying they love the game, others saying they hate it, some saying it's completely broken, depending on which kind of platform they're playing on, others it runs mostly fine outside some crashes. I've certainly experienced a few crashes on PS5, but overall it's been an enjoyable experience that looks quite nice. But for CD Projekt Red, the biggest indicator of success though is apparently within the first day alone. They surpassed the development costs and profits. This has been attributed largely to the pre-orders of the game itself. So I'm seeing a No Man's Sky situation, but less extreme. If you're unaware, No Man's Sky was a game that had a ton of promises, but because it was put out before it was complete, did not deliver on most of them. It's now essentially been patchworked after release into a state where it has delivered on almost every single promise made and like a thousand more. Cyberpunk's gonna be in a similar spot, I would guess, where yeah, it's not done, six months from now, we'll probably actually get the version of the game we as fans were told we would get in the first place. Do I like this practice? No, but I have a feeling in my gut it's gonna become a lot more common in the gaming industry as a whole, so. That's that. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here, and have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest hide tier Patreons, Hide Armor of the Transcended, and Historion de Siruki Kroniki Film. I tried my best, that's like my sixth take.